Disney News Update Time. Hey everyone, Wade for the Canyon Report back with you once again, covering all the latest headlines coming out of the Walt Disney Company from coast to coast and around the world. And today we start off with some interesting news coming out of Disney Corporate. The New York Post is reporting that a group of Disney fans fuming over soaring ticket prices and long lines at the theme parks have bought the company's stock and are threatening to vote against CEO Bob Chapek's re-election at a March 9th annual shareholder meeting. The irate fans took to Reddit to organize against re-electing Chapek, who grabbed the reins from longtime CEO Bob Iger two years ago. They griped over price hikes of tickets, food, and merchandise at Disneyland and Disney World, as well as declining customer service at the theme parks, among other things. In a thread called Unhappy with the Current State of Disney Parks, one Reddit user wrote, quote, if you are a Disney shareholder, you likely received an email yesterday asking you to vote in the annual meeting. Bob Chapek is up for re-election to the board of directors. This is the most direct way to let Disney know if you are unhappy with his leadership, at least more so than complaining on Reddit or signing an online petition, the Reddit user added. It may seem insignificant and will likely not be successful in removing him directly, but recall that Michael Eisner lost 43% of the vote in 2004 after Roy E. Disney led a campaign to oust him and he was removed shortly thereafter. We can do this again. Close quote. One angry shareholder who recently visited Disney World's Epcot vented over long lines and the fact that they have to now pay for access to FastPass, a program that allows customers to make reservations for rides without having to stand in line. Quote, the magic is gone. Parks were oversold, two-hour-plus waits for everything, major rides like Ratatouille and Rise of the Resistance down all day, plus charging now for fast pass access, charging for parking at Disney resorts, the user wrote. No parades, food prices out of control. Seriously, how many millions does one CEO need? We've been to Disney annually for the last 12 years, and what's going on there now is heartbreaking. Close quote. Other shareholders also called out JPEG's hefty $32.5 million in compensation in 2021, which has earned the exec <laughs> the nickname Paycheck on the Reddit board. F. Bob Chapek wrote one user, I've become much less trustful of this company leadership. I voted against Paycheck and for all the shareholder topics the board doesn't want you to vote for, another said explaining that hiking prices and penny-pinching juices Disney's financials, which benefits management, not customers. But Disney, which has been hit hard by the pandemic, has said it is increasing prices in order to make up for the loss of business. Recently, anger has bubbled over among fans over the sky-high prices of Disney's newest Star Wars-themed hotel as an example of the company's outlandish new strategy. Disney World's new cruise ship-like hotel, dubbed Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser has recently been slammed by fans as subpar and too expensive. Meanwhile, outraged Disney fans have taken to change.org to sign a petition dubbed Fire Bob Chapek, the petition which says the CEO has consistently put himself and money above the product and quality of the company has garnered over 95,000 signatures. A story that we cover here in long form for you on the Kingdom Report. Once again, thank you to the New York Post. For that story. And speaking of the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel from LiveAndLet'sFly.com, writer Kyle Stewart writes the following saying, Disney announced its new Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel, the immersive Star Wars experience, but now that it's open, prices and delivery have many taking pot shots at Disney World. Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida officially launches its Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel on March the 1st, 2022. The property is constructed behind Hollywood Studios, home to the park Star Wars Galaxy's Edge land. Like other theme park additions of the last 10 to 15 years, Galaxy's Edge is treated as an immersive experience where there are no mentions of the rest of the park. Prices for goods are referred to as credits, and Disney cast members refer to being on or off planet. The land is home to a number of unique dining and shopping experiences, as well as a ride featuring the Millennium Falcon and the new Rise of the Resistance. Walt Disney Company is trying to take Star Wars fans out of this world by completely enclosing the experience for visitors. One way in which they achieve this is to offer guests valet parking and then treat them to a cruise, whereby the entire stay is meant to be like a cruise in the Star Wars universe. 
Disney's Star Wars Hotel has been hotly anticipated, but some have already indicated concerns about execution, a rarity for Disney parks. One of those concerns has been that the parks will not be able to deliver on amenities they promise. Recently, the theme park couldn't get cases for their $200 minimum lightsabers, so instead they offered umbrella sleeves. The transport to the Galactic Star Cruiser appears to be conducted by a box truck, which again levels concerns that Disney may not be putting in the limited extra effort for a simple body kit like they do for all the rest of their vehicles. The Star Wars hotel price is an additional source of ridicule. Fashioned after a Disney Cruise Line model where cabin purchase is an all-inclusive experience, standard cabins for a couple start at $4,809 for the two-night stay, a family of four runs at $5,999, but wait, there's more! That's for weeknight experiences, with weekends running even higher. For comparison, a Disney Cruise for seven nights with Star Wars Day at Sea and actual Caribbean Island stops start at $4,662 per cabin for the entire journey. At more than $1,200 a night per person, no detail can be overlooked. When images surfaced of the box truck that was to stand in for the experience of lifting off from the planet and heading to the Galactic Star Cruiser, the internet was not kind, with various critical posts and lots of sarcasm. In conclusion, the writer says, I love Star Wars and I am sure I would love this experience, but for $2,400 a night it's a ridiculous notion. To find that it comes with transport via box truck, a couple of park meals plus a pair of lightning lane passes makes this all the more absurd. Availability of the cruises seems to suggest the market agrees that this is an overpriced cash grab. Once again, our thanks to Kyle Stewart of LiveAndLet'sFly.com. And finally, when you visit Disneyland Resort, there are some things you expect to see. People enjoying a delicious Dole Whip, toddlers sleeping in their strollers, and a long line for Radiator Springs racers. However, sometimes you see something you never expected. TikToker Kel, also known as at Theme Park Mom, was visiting the happiest place on Earth recently and couldn't help but share her wild story. Kel took to the social media platform to share that while she was waiting her turn to get into the park, she heard cast members yelling for security. She then saw a group of four teenagers running towards the park through the exit. They ran past cast members and sprinted down Main Street. She then pointed out that the act seemed fruitless. Security cameras cover every inch of the Disneyland Resort. While seeing people try to break into a Disney park may be shocking enough, the story doesn't end there. Kel followed up her original post with one where she reveals that she later saw two of the teens who broke into the park. They were being followed by security who soon surrounded them. Sadly, two of the teenagers were with a young boy and a young girl. Security told the group they needed to go with them to a secure area. They were then escorted off Main Street. Kel finishes her series informing her followers that cast members told her that the two young children seen in her second video were not a part of the group that originally broke in. She said that the group who broke past cast members at the exit were four teenagers around the same age as the two that had been caught. She did not know what happened to the other two or where they were. Kel also did not know how the children became involved in the situation, but Anaheim police were also on scene. When visiting Disneyland Park or Disney California Adventure, both a ticket and a reservation are needed to enter the park. It's unknown if the teens had tickets, but no reservations or if they had tickets at all. However, thinking that they could simply run past security and enjoy their day is unfathomable. Disney has no qualms about banning guests who behave like that. It is possible that the teens may have been told that they are not to step foot on any Disney property again. Our many thanks to DisneyDining.com and writer Kristen Swenson for this story. And in news that could have a direct impact on Disneyland visitors, California announced today that it will be ending its indoor masking requirements for unvaccinated people starting next week, February the 15th. At that time, unvaccinated people will still be required to be masked indoors and everyone, whether they are vaccinated or not, will have to wear masks in higher risk areas like on public transit. Local governments can also continue their own indoor masking requirements. No word yet on what Orange County plans to do, but last week health officials from nearby Los Angeles County said that they will keep their mandates in place. 
With news just in, Disney has yet to say if they plan on changing the health and safety policies across the Disneyland Resort. We do know that state officials in California announced that indoor mega events of more than 1,000 people will have to require vaccinations or negative tests. For outdoor events with more than 10,000 people, vaccinations are not required, but masks and negative tests are recommended. As the Associated Press tells us, coronavirus cases have been on the decline in California, saying, quote, Omicron has loosened its hold on California, vaccines for children under five are around the corner, and access to COVID-19 treatments is improving, said State Public Health Officer Dr. Tomas Aragon. With things moving in the right direction, we are making responsible modifications to COVID-19 prevention measures, while also continuing to develop a longer-term action plan for the state, close quote. California has seen a 65% drop in case rates since the peak during the wintertime Omicron surge. Our many thanks to Melissa Roden of MickeyBlog.com for that story. An important thing to note here is that the Disneyland Resort, even in the midst of the state of California not having an indoor mask mandate in effect last year, Disneyland continued to have an indoor mask rule for the sake of attractions, transportation, shopping, and yes, of course, dining, following much of what the CDC had recommended throughout the year. Will they make a pivot and change course all of a sudden with mask mandates being removed for indoor spaces? We will see. And now you are up to date. Our many thanks to the outlets that provided today's stories. And are you at all concerned that Bob Chapek may be in some trouble when it comes to the Disney shareholder meeting coming up? Let us know in the comment section. As always, your perspective does matter. For The Kingdom Report, I'm Wade Heath. We'll see you next time for another installment of the Disney Parks News Update. Welcome.